This week really was no joke when it came to away fixtures for Manchester United. It started with Everton at Goodison Park and we had a 3-0 win. Probably our best overall performance of the season. Wasn't complete, but Manu and Garnacho, but Galatasaray on Wednesday. Welcome back to hell, of course. That famous game against Galatasaray in the 90s where United got knocked out. We didn't get the result that we wanted and we need. It's a must win on Wednesday. Sometimes you say a must win. This is literally a must win if United want to qualify from the Champions League group stage. Will Hoyland come into the team? Will Kobe Mainu start? What about Garnacho? I'm going to run through all the team news from Eric Ten Hag ahead of the game. I'm going to run through the starting eleven that we played against Everton and any changes I would make. And you can let me know what you think in the comments below, as you always do. But this is going to be a spicy game. Uh, well, Alex has gone out there from the podcast. Uh, Chris has gone out as well. Ryan's gone out. Enjoy the trip. I'm sure they will. But it's going to be a spicy atmosphere. And Eric Ten Hag, this is what he said ahead of the game. because you know, you're going to have to stay calm. And United, typically, in these sorts of environments, we've crumbled, haven't we? But Everton, Goodison Park, was an occasion where we stood up to it. And that early goal from Garnacho was absolutely crucial. Now, going into this game, there's been some good team news, right? Hoyland has travelled. Anthony is available. I'm not sure whether I would put Anthony into the starting eleven. That's just kind of my opinion on it. But it's going to be great to see Hoyland back in. I don't know what... Do you think... Right. So if Hoyland's going to get used in this game, would you rather see Hoyland start or come off the bench? You can let me know what you think in the comments below. Somebody else who actually trained with the first team ahead of, ahead of traveling was Jack Fletcher. 16-year-old joined with Tyler. Of course, Jack and Tyler. Darren Fletcher's two boys. I think they joined from City. Uh, the fact that he's already getting an opportunity to train with the first team kind of goes to show he must be growing as an individual. But look, let's take a look at this team. We all know where the... Well, I think it's obvious where the standout players were against Everton at the weekend. I thought Kobe Maynou was man of the match for me. Garnacho with that goal. I thought, I'll be honest, Luke Shaw was pretty impressive. Actually, it wasn't Wan Bissaka there, was it? It was Delo. Let me get that right. Sorry about that. Whoop. Of course, Delo with the assist for Garnacho's goal. And I thought Maguire and Lindelof were pretty impressive. But I tell you, there's one player who I think is going to have to have a very good game if we're going to get the result we want. And it's a player who so far in the Champions League hasn't really been living up to his own sort of standards that he set last season when he was in the final against Man City. Onana's going to have to pull it out the bag. And without being harsh, you know, Onana's mistakes have been particularly costing in this tournament so far in the group stage. Away at Bayern Munich, home to Galatasaray, two standout ones. But Onana's been significantly better since that penalty save against Copenhagen that kept us in the competition, right? So I want to see Onana playing with under pressure because it's going to be loud. There is going to be serious pressure on these players. And I hope he starts. If I'm looking at the defenders who I think are probably going to be more important, most important for United, I'm probably going to be looking at these two. Maguire and Shaw. Shaw coming back in, and he was, in my opinion, he was just, he just kind of slotted straight back in, didn't he? That's the way I would describe that performance from Luke Shaw. I want to see him start in the same position as long as he's completely fit. He was taken off after, what, 70, 75 minutes? Same as Kobe Mainu. I think Shaw starts, and I think those two, hopefully, are going to be influential for United, but I don't quite know. Who would you start right back? Would you keep Delow in? Would you bring wan in? Ten Hag doesn't particularly like changing and winning team unless he needs to. So I don't think he's really... You could well see Varane come in. All right. Would you bring Varane in for the Champions League here? Mm, what would I do? I mean, you're not going to play... It's clear that Ten Hag doesn't trust Varane at left centre-back. He knows that Maguire is better at right centre-back. And he knows that right now Maguire is the best defender that we've got on form. So he probably keeps it like that. But it's interesting. I don't actually know. But this is going to be the biggest talking point, I would probably say, ahead of the game. Do you start Komi Menu? Yes or no? You let me know in the comments below. This is what Ten Hag said ahead of the game, which I think is going to please a lot of players, right? It's got no fear. If the players are good enough, they're old enough, and Komi Menu showed against Everton that he's good enough. Like the utter composure that he had in that midfield there was outrageous. And the positions there are kind of wrong because McTominay's average position... Maynou's average position was around about there. Bruno's was around about here. That's probably more what the actual shape ended up being like against um, Everton. He really did operate as that central 
kind of number six if you want to go on paper as a number. But who do you partner him with? I want to see this. I think I want to see this. I haven't quite decided. But I'd rather see Amrabat start this game and McTominay come on in the second half because I don't think that the extra goal threat of McTominay in this is what will help us. I think we need as much uh, as many ball hungry individuals as possible. And I think playing Mainu there, take McTominay off, he can come on. Playing Mainu alongside Amrabat with Bruno as kind of like the isolated number, not isolated, but sole number 10. And having Amrabat alongside Mainu in midfield will serve Manchester United better in this game. McTominay is a goal threat and McTominay can be a goal threat from the bench. But I think controlling the game... At, it's unlikely we're going to get a goal after another hundred, after another like two minutes that takes the sting out of the game. So we're going to have to have players who are comfortable in possession. And McTominay just, he, he's, he kind of hides away from the ball. He'd rather receive the ball further up the pitch. And how Maynou played against Everton was what I was expecting of Amrabat a lot more this season. So I would play those two alongside each other in midfield. And then I'd bring McTominay on a little bit later in the game. Right? Bruno's definitely starting. That's an absolute given. Marcus Rashford, of course, is suspended, so he can't play in this game. Who replaces him? We'll speak about that in a sec. But I'd rather see that in midfield, Maynou, Amrabat, and Bruno. And I would bring McTominay on for Maynou or Amrabat, depending on how the game is going. That's what I would like to see in midfield. Now, up front, there's definitely questions to ask. And, of course, the biggest question is, does Rasmus Hoyland start? Now, in my opinion, Rasmus Hoyland, if he's fit to travel and he's fit to play, Rasmus Hoyland absolutely starts this game. I would much rather see Rasmus Hoyland start this game and come off after 60 minutes than the other way around. And I also, I also think it would suit Martial a little bit more to play against a little bit more tired legs for the last 30 than it would suit Hoyland. Right? So that's what I would rather see from the start. But of course, the front three isn't quite set there. I just wanted to bring a picture of a guy that chose goal up. Right? <laughs> no particular reason. I'm just going to drop it in at random points across the season because it's that ridiculous. You can't drop Garnacho, can you? I don't think you can. I really, really don't think you can. If you, uh, I'm a big, big believer in form and playing players on form. But of course, Marcus Rashford being suspended means he's unavailable, which leaves options on that right wing. Okay. Um, and there are two options. Let me quickly get this up here. Number one, Anthony. And number two, Pilistri. Now, you need to let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Anthony's had a very ineffectual season, but I understand what Ten Hag is saying here because Pilistri has been a better player from the bench than he has been from the starting 11, which was something I said about Garnacho pretty much the whole time until the, until the Everton game. Now he's done that, you're like, boom, you made that transition towards really impacting a game from the very, very start. Within the, I'll go within a couple of minutes. So it depends whether you think Anthony will start or Pellistri will start. And again, if I'm looking at a start, if, if I'm looking at someone I'd rather start and someone I'd rather bring on, I think Anthony will probably start this game. And then we've got Pellistri, Martial, and I would say McTominay and Hannibal are four players I think that can come off the bench and have an impact. Mount's injured, Casemiro's injured, Eriksen's injured, Rashford's suspended. Ahmad's also injured. And Van der Beek is a ghost. I know he's a liar, but he's an actual ghost. Um, so we've got Hannibal, McTominay, Martial, Pellistri from the bench. And that would be, that right there is my starting 11. Luke Shaw keeping it, not changing anything in that back five. I just don't think Ten Hag will do it. We kept another clean sheet and Ten Hag doesn't change too much unless he needs to. So that's what I would do in the back five. I would bring in uh, mainly, I would bring in Amrabat for McTominay. That's the change I'm making in midfield because I think we need more possession there rather than the goal threat. I think that would serve us better overall in the game. And I'm putting on Anthony on the right wing with Hoyland coming back in up front and Rashford, of course, being suspended. But I don't know what to expect from this game, all right? We know what it's going to be. It lives up to expectation. It will be a... Not a violent atmosphere... But it's a sort of game that could get violent if United let it go down that way. And that's why Ten Hag's saying, look, you've got to stay in your head. If I'm looking at all these, any of these players who I worry about getting overly emotional, I'm looking at Bruno Fernandes. 
it'll be up to him to make sure he doesn't get sucked into it. If I'm Galatasaray, I probably target Anthony and get him annoyed and riled up because he might get a reaction. So maybe for that reason, you do start Pellistri. But my prediction for this game, I don't, I don't know what to predict, man. You know, it really surprised me against Everton. I don't think anybody had United down as a 3-0 winners in that game. I'm going to go for like a tight 2-1. A fight. And that's what this game has to be. It's got to be a, it's got to be a scrap. It's got to be a dogfight. Because there's no way that we comfortably cruise through this game. All right? It just will not happen. I'm going to go for a 2-1 win. That's my starting 11. Amrabat coming in instead of McTominay. Hoyden up front instead of Martial. And Anthony on the right-hand side with Rashford being suspended. They're the changes I'm making. I'm going for a 2-1 win. Might be spectacularly wrong. We'll find out here. My prediction for Everton was 2 all. Got that wrong. We'll find out. Let me know what yours is in the comments. But we need to win. Can we do it away, Galatasaray? Only a few days after doing it away at, good, at Everton? Fingers crossed. I really hope so.